So this is our, in, in this truck, our paramedic gear, um, and it's divided up in kind of different categories and everything on an ambulance we set up so we can grab it quickly or we can bring it into a house. So like I said, we can start treatment right at a patient's side when we first find them. So instead of having to get all the way to the emergency room on your own and waiting to see my nurse and go to a room and have the doctor come in, we can do it all wherever you're sitting, whether it's at your kitchen table or whatever. And that we do that by putting things in bags. So this is our one of our primary medication ALS bags and we'll take a look at that in a second. Up here is actually a safe that we put our narco narcotics in and each paramedic on the service is issued their own unique uh, pin code and they have access and only they have access to the narcotics and that's all logged and dated and at the beginning and end of every shift our, our paramedics sign out and sign in those narcotics uh, since those are considered a controlled drug. Over here, we also have IV stuff. We have IV warmers. So when you get an IV and you get some fluid, uh, it can cool you down pretty fast if it's room temperature. We're at 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit normally. So this warmer will actually warm that fluid up so we don't cool you down when we give you those fluids. And then back here, we have some more intubation supplies. So if somebody's not breathing, we can actually breathe for them. So all those are in bags and we can take them out as we decide we need them. So this is our primary paramedic ALS bag that we would carry into a house or carry with us. And this gives us a lot of the, the tools or toys that we sometimes refer to them as, as a paramedic. Um, everything is compartmentalized. Every ambulance service might have a different style bag, but basically we've all found that this works the best to have things in bags. So. Right off the bat, we'll just open the main compartment here. And what we can see is that kind of the emergency things here. So these are all different drugs that we use if somebody's in cardiac arrest, typically. Um, and we put them right up top here and so we can get to them quickly. We have a sharps container because we use needles and we want to stay safe. And then we have our fluids and some more, um, some more drugs down there. Over here, uh, we have IV kit um, to start IVs on people. And this is actually, if we can't get an IV on somebody and we absolutely have to give them medication, we actually have, it's a drill. It's a drill and we actually can drill right into somebody's bone and we can give medication that way. It's, uh, it's very fast and I'm told it hurts less than an IV but I don't know, I've never had one myself. We also have things in here for um, airway. Uh, this is a nebulizer treatment. If anybody, uh, either themselves or knows somebody who suffers from asthma, this will be very familiar to them. We can give albuterol updrafts and uh, breathing treatments like that. And that's something that we uh, commonly do. Um, so I mentioned that these are all uh, drugs for our cardiac arrest. We actually have a lot more drugs available to us. And uh, in our service, we carry them on an outside pack here. And each one of these drugs does something different. And as a paramedic, we're all required to memorize what each of these drugs do and be familiar with how much we need to give in what order, what drugs can go together, what drugs shouldn't go together, and uh, what drugs hurt patients in certain conditions and what drugs make patients better. Uh, every one of these uh, has a different use. We have things uh, like um, Haldol. We have things like some of you will recognize some of these, diltiazem, that's if somebody's uh, also known as cardizem, if anybody suffers from uh, AFib, they might take that uh, in pill form. Uh, in an emergency, we can actually give it to somebody through an IV. We have things, uh, metoprolol, which is low pressure. Uh, people might be familiar with that. What else? Uh, here's, here's one that's been in the news a lot recently. It's naloxone or Narcan. And this is something that we can give to patients who are suffering either from a heroin overdose or otherwise having an opioid overdose. And often in the news we're talking about 
those kits that they hand out. You can give it nasally. We can spray it up into somebody's nose. We can do that, but as paramedics, since we can start IVs, we find that giving medications through an IV work a lot faster and a lot more reliably. So we'll give that Narcan through an IV uh, instead of going through the nose. Um, we have things like albuterol for the breathing treatments. We have nitroglycerin, which uh, sounds crazy, but we use that for somebody who's having chest pain. We have uh, lots and lots and lots of stuff. Um, we even have stuff simply for uh, nausea. As a paramedic, these are all things that uh, a paramedic is required to memorize and know off the top of their head. That when you're a paramedic, you're alone in the back, typically with a patient, so you need to know these things in your head. You can't take the time to refer to a colleague as you could in an emergency department or go to a reference material. It's really, you're the front line, you gotta do some things. So we really hound in paramedic school that paramedics feel comfortable with these drugs. They're familiar with their dosaging and what patients can receive them and what patients can't. Uh, we also have simple things like glucometers for checking patients' blood sugar. Uh, we need to do that before we give them certain stuff. Uh, glucose, we even have EpiPens. And people who have um, allergies to things might recognize that. So just as you would carry an EpiPen around in your purse or book bag or pocket, we have them too. So when somebody's in anaphylaxis shock, we can give them an EpiPen. So as I said before, we carry everything in bags. We kind of compartmentalize it. This is our airway bag. So if somebody is complaining of a problem with breathing in general, um, or they might not be breathing because of another condition, this is the bag that we go to. Um, it actually is set up like a backpack since it's a little bit heavy. So we, our providers can carry it wherever they're going. Say somebody's on a hike in the woods, we can put our bags right on our back and bring them in that way. Uh, our main compartment, everything is kind of designed to fold out. We have um, devices for breathing for people. We have an oxygen tank for providing the oxygen. And we can do things like provide CPAP. Um, this is something that if somebody has ever uh, suffered from uh, COPD or something like that, where they have a very hard time breathing because their lungs are filling with fluid, um, this is a device that we can strap to somebody's head and actually push that fluid back out of their lungs. Um, this saves a lot of lives and it's a really, really great tool to have. Uh, one of the interesting things is if we have a patient who is not breathing at all, like in a cardiac arrest, we want to be able to give them breaths. So we can intubate them is our, our main option here. And here is our laryngoscope setup. And this is a device that we use to actually open somebody's mouth and look down their windpipe, look down their trachea. And they're called blades, but they're actually not sharp at all. Um, they're just pieces of metal, and they're actually disposable, and they have a little light on the end. And when, when you attach them to a handle, the light comes on, and we can actually put this down somebody's mouth and lift open their jaw, and we can insert a tube right into their windpipe. And through that is how we breathe, them, breathe for them. And what that allows is for us to deliver oxygen without it going into their stomach or things like that. It only goes into their lungs. And if anybody's unfortunately ever had to perform CPR, they'll know that one of the most difficult things is that breathing portion. Uh, and a lot of CPR classes now, they don't even teach the breathing because it is so difficult. So paramedics uh, spend a lot of time training and uh, practicing to breathe for patients. And that's the equipment that we use to breathe for them.